Why is HTTP3 eating the world? Let's find out. Uh, the hypertext transfer protocol uh, is a cornerstone of the internet. It's a cornerstone of HTMX2. HTMX mentioned it. Put a check mark in the mention already. Helping to load web pages, stream videos, and fetch data to your favorite apps. Last year, a new version of the protocol, HTTP3, was standardized by the Internet Engineering Task Force. Imagine if you, you were a part of this task force. I want to be a part of that task force, okay? It sounds exciting. I want to be on any kind of task force. Uh, the organization in charge of defining internet technology. Since then, HTTP3 uh, and the related quick protocol have seen rapid uptake on the public web. The exact numbers depend on the source and measurement methodology with HTTP3 support ranging from 19 to 50 plus percent of web servers uh, worldwide. That's insane. So the big difference is, for those that don't know, uh, the big difference is between HTTP3 and HTTP2, HTTP3 exists kind of in both, in, in two different layers, right? So it, it, that's what makes it so confusing and hard to implement is that you, you have uh, the TLS side of things like in the protocol itself, which is usually a little bit different. So for something like uh, TCP, it just transfers structured data, right? So it transfers structured data, then you'd have some sort of TLSing whatever layer, and then you have some sort of HTTP layer, which then chunks it into the appropriate thing and goes, here you go. Whereas with Quick, it now runs over UDP, which means that you have to do like this kind of weird hopping around. It's just a little different. It's kind of exciting because you do a chunk on the outside, then send it to potentially the TLS -E side, and then back up into the HTTP side. Just is a little bit different. It's UDP. It's kind of exciting. UDP. No, UDP. Okay, here it goes. H3 adoption grows rapidly. All right, look at that thing. Just, just, just launch. Holy cow. It's only been a year or two years, and this thing is just flying up. That's pretty cool. HTTP 1, it's shocking how much HTD, uh, HTTP 1 is still going on. That is a lot of HTTP 1. What is this one? Version 2? Version 2 is kind of annoying. It's really that server priority that really just makes me upset. HPAC is the greatest. It's the killer feature. It's the best feature of HTTP2 is HPAC. It truly is. Uh, because these new pr protocols are heavily used by large companies such as Google and Meta, we can safely say that a large chunk of the current internet traffic already being used uh, uses HTTP3 today. In fact, the blog post you are reading right now was probably loaded over HTTP3. Okay, nice. In this series, we'll provide some context on what problems HTTP3 solves and how it performs, why it's seen such swift adoption, and what limitations it is still working to overcome. HTTP3 equals the web three? No, 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 no. It's just unfortunate that, that they na they're named very similar. You know, don't, <laughs> don't, put them, don't put them together. HTTP, yeah. I don't know how to it's, it's saying the phrase HTTP is so hard, but HTTP just sounds so much easier to say. So why do we need HTTP3? Well, a network protocol describes how data is communicated between two entities on the network, typically the user's device and a web server. As there are many different companies building software for the web, the protocol needs to be standardized so that the software can be interoperable. That is, they can all understand each other because they follow the same rules. Yeah, hopefully they're going to show a big difference between uh, TCP and UDP because that's where a huge amount of awesome. Here's me talking about that whole like TLS problem, right? See, it goes from TCP, TLS, HTTP2, whereas this one's like, you go UDP, you do this whole quick thing, but then you have like this, like, you have to do Alpine, blah, 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 whatever negotiation goes on here, and then it goes up here, which is just kind of wild. It's just a different experience, right? It's just a different experience. Anyways, so this is good. In practice, we don't use a single protocol, but a combination of several at the same time, each with its own responsibilities and rules. This uh, is to make things flexible and reusable. You can still use the exact same HTTP logic, regardless if you're using Wi-Fi, cable, 4G, or 5G, that, which makes sense, right? That's the physical layer. Um, all right, and many of the original protocols for the internet were standardized in the 80s and 90s, meaning that they were built with the goals and restrictions of those decades in mind. While some of these protocols have stood the test of time, others have started to show their age. Most problems have been solved by workarounds and clever tricks. However, it is clear something would have to change. This is especially true for the transport control protocol, which ensures your data is reliable, reliably gets across the internet. Yeah, you don't do TCP, you do TCP in UDP. Think about that for a second, okay? I, I think the general rule of thumb is that most packets make it. So why act everything? Like, that's probably the simplest way to explain why it makes such a big difference from UDP to TCP. Because UDP is just like a fire forget, right? You just send information, and that's it. Whereas TCP requires you to act all the things and all that. 
Uh, a dropped packet can be a bad, though. Well, of course a dropped packet can be bad, but that's what the TCP in UDP does, is that when there is, uh, when there is a dropped packet, you knack. You knack the packet, a negative acknowledgement. I did not get this one. Can you please resend that? So it's like an inversion. So instead of being like an ack, like I did receive one, I did receive two, I did receive three. Instead, it's like I didn't receive three. Can you please resend that one? That's pretty much uh, one of the big wins, right? It's the same thing with for our, our RTMP. That's TCP, though. There's a lot more acts, though. You get acts as opposed to acts. Uh, HTTP 1 and 2 uh, rely on TCP to successfully do their job before a client and server can exchange HTTP uh, response and request. Request and response. Anyways, uh, they must establish a TCP connection. Over time, there has been many efforts to update the TCP and resolve some of its inefficiencies. A TCP still loads web pages as if they are single files instead of a collection of hundreds of individual files. Some of these updates have been successful, but most of the more impactful ones, for example, TCP multipath and TCP fast open, took nearly a decade to be practical, practically usable on the public uh, internet. I don't know what fast open and multipath is. Is fast open just reestablishing or reusing uh, connections? Because I know there's like a there's like a, a a single trip SSL type stuff where they can kind of fast pay, f fast fast path some of it. Uh, the main challenge with implementing changes to TCP is thousands of devices on the internet all have their own implementation of the TCP protocol. These include phones, laptops, and servers, as well as routers, firewalls, load balancers, and other types of middle boxes. As such, if we want to update TCP, we have to wait for a significant portion of all these devices to update their implementation, which in practice can take years. Yeah, you pretty much are waiting for those devices to get replaced with newer ones. So HTTP3 is Bun. Yes, Bun recently said something which was kind of silly, which they said uh, because Twitter wanted to improve their performance. And so Bun suggested that the easiest way to improve their performance is to use Bun, which A, I don't even think, if I'm not mistaken, it's written in a JVM uh, technology. And JVM is currently much faster than Bun. <laughs> you, would, you would actually... You'd actually have to und <laughs> you'd have to lose some of the performance to get down into the bun category. I mean, I'm not saying writing Scala is like a W, okay? I'm not saying Scala W time, okay? I'm just saying JVM is typically known to be a touch faster. Anyways, the pro uh, the problem. Uh, let's see. This became a problem to the point that most practical way forward was to replace TCP with something entirely new. This replacement is the Quick Protocol, uh, though uh, many still jokingly refer to it as TCP 2.0. This nickname is appropriate because Quick includes many of the same high level features of TCP, but with a couple crucial changes. All right, all right. Scala mentioned. Let's go. Uh, the main change is that Quick heavily integrates with the transport layer security protocol. TLS is responsible for encrypting sensitive data on the web. It's the thing that provides the S secure in HTTPS. HTTPS. With TCP, TLS only encrypts the actual HTTP data. This is true. Uh, with Quick, TLS also encrypts large parts of the Quick protocol itself. This means that metadata, such as packet number and connection uh, close signals, which were visible to and changeable by all middle boxes in TCP, are now only available to the client and server in Quick. This is super cool, by the way. This is kind of like a really cool feature of being a part of your own little uh, stack in the TCP area, right? And this makes sense. So here you go. Here's like a really good example of it all, right? So you still get the UDP payload stuff, which I forget how many bytes are associated with the UDP header. How many are, uh, does anyone know off the top of their head? Good reading prime. I'm trying. I'm like practicing my reading skills. Like I'm up to like a sixth grade. I assume it's 20, but I think that's TCP. The same thing. Uh, TCP needs a quick dick, uh, Dickens of cider. No one's drinking apple cider right now. I can't remember shit like that. Okay. That's fair. So this, this is a perfect example, right? Because you still need the, the TCP payload. Right, the thing that controls the headers, and then you have all the other stuff with HTTP data and all that in there, which has the source port, destination, sequence, act, blah 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 options. This one just has the source, de uh, source, destination, checksum. I don't know what th this is, and then all of this is beautifully. My guess is mostly encrypted. Yeah. Oh, cool. This part's encrypted, and this part's encrypted, but you don't have the MAC and part of the connection ID. Okay, that's kind of cool though. I wonder what, why only some of the flags? I wonder, these flags must be some sort of public flagging. Like, hey, this has been tls That way you know it's tls I think, maybe. I don't know. Interesting, though. No, we're not going straight to the Haskell thing. Furthermore, because Quick is more extensively encrypted, uh, it will be much easier than it was for TCP to change it or to add new features. We only need to update the clients and the servers as the middle boxes can't decrypt the metadata anyways. This is, this is a big feature right here. 
You don't need that because UDP is going to be the same. So you're now actually doing a protocol on UDP. So the middle boxes don't really, they don't really care because the server is the one that has to knack back and get the data. So they don't really, you know, it makes it so it's way easier to update. Yeah, this makes quick a future proof protocol that will allow us to more quickly solve new challenges. Of course, this extra encryption is good for general security and privacy of the new protocol too. While TCP plus TLS are perfect for securing sensitive personal data such as credit cards or email content, they can still be vulnerable to complex privacy attacks, which have become ever more practical to execute due to recent advancements in AI. By further encrypting this type of metadata, Quick is more resilient to sophisticated threat actors. Okay, that's a positive. Ooh, look at this thing. This is exciting. I, I want to look at this one because that's more of what I'm curious about. Quick also has many other security-related features, including defense against distributed denial of service attacks with features such as amplification prevention and retry packets. Finally, Quick is uh, also includes a large amount of efficiency and performance improvements compared to TCP, including a faster connection handshake, the removal of head line blocking problem, better packet loss detection slash recovery, and a way to deal with users switching networks. Oh, nice. Okay. Let's look at this guy. All right, hold on. So we got the client, talks to the server, server sends back to the client, we do two black lines, and then we do a red line. Yeah, okay, there's two connections. I forget, I forget what these two were that are required. This is an Alpine request, I know that. I think you can actually, I think you can reduce this into a single round trip. I know there's some techniques to reduce this into some round trip territory. Let's see, we didn't need HTTP3, what we needed was quick. Okay, okay, TLS uh, 1.3 allows for zero RTT. I don't know about single, uh, the, oh, okay. Yeah, I, I've never, I've never programmed or like, I've never worked on the TLS layer itself. Uh, I've done a little bit with it, but not enough to really like. I did like a fake Alpine thing for something at one point, or I, I, I had an if condition for Alpine and then ignored it for HTTP two. I've never actually done any of those things. Uh, who needs security anyways? Nobody does. Initially, they, uh, there were attempts to keep HTTP two and make minimal adjustments so we could ins also ensure quick in the lower layers. After all, that's the whole point of uh, having those different cooperating and reusable protocols. However, it became clear that quick was just different enough from TCP to make HTTP two incompatible. As such, the decision was to make a new version of HTTP just for quick, which eventually became HTTP three. I wish they would have talked a little bit about HPAC slash QPAC because that's where the, that's, so the, the big reason, why are those things cool? You're probably asking, what is it, why, why is that neat? Here, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you why those things are kind of cool. I'm going to go from memory and I haven't thought about it in a long time. So if I have some details slightly wrong, I'm sorry. It's just a part of things. Like, you know that if you send your cookies up right now, what ends up happening is that you're going to have, you know, cookie or, uh, you know, you know, field one, right? Like header, header one, right? header one, and it's going to be a bunch of data. You're going to have header two, it's going to be a bunch of data. You're going to have header three, it's going to be a bunch of data. And so how QPAC, or how, uh, how what's it called? How HPAC works, which I don't know uh, QPAC, but effectively, once you've sent up a header, it takes that header information and goes, okay, I've seen this, since we've seen this once before, what we're going to do is we're actually going to take this and I'm going to go, all right, call this one number one, right? And so it's going to call it number one. And then it's going to go, hey, this one, I'm going to call this one number two. And then I want you to send this one up as number three. So that means the next time I make a, requ uh, a request, what I'm going to effectively send up will look like something like this, right? I'll have uh, header uh, one, one, header two, two, header three, three. And so you just send up like a byte or however much information. So, you know, like, think about how big your cookie is, right? Your cookie can be really big. It could be lots of information. So every single HTTP one request is a lot of information. Whereas this one keeps, a, keeps the server and the client in sync on what these numbers mean. And so then if the client drops something, it has to let people know. You have to set the same size of cache on both sides. So as new ones come in and old ones get pushed out, that's what happened. So think of like, effectively think of an LRU. My cookie is bigger than yours. Okay, you don't need to flex your cookie side, cookie size. Okay, you don't need to do that. All right, HTTP three is almost identical to HTTP two. They mainly differ in the technical implementations of the feature on top of Quick or TCP. Also, uh, Quick just requires tons of programming. HTTP two is stateful. Yes, yeah, so I assume Quick is also stateful.
Yeah, I wonder. I wonder what the what what Q packs like. Uh, uh, let's see. However, because HP three can also use all of uh, Quick's new features, uh, it is expected to become more performant when loading web pages and streaming videos. In practice, it's espe uh, it's especially this aspect that has led to HP three's rapid adoption. In my next post, I'll go over uh, let's see more detail on the common connectivity problems you'll likely experience and how Quick can reduce calls and videos from cutting out when your mobile devices changes uh, from using Wi Fi to cellular connectivity. Okay, nice, nice. UDP, uh, in, let's see, in UDP connections don't exist. Yes, they're stateless. Yeah, maybe Quick Protocol has connections. It well, well, it it has the same. Like it's no different than RTMP, right? RTMP, RTP, all those ones run also uh, over UDP. So it's the exact same concept, right? You effectively have a stateless connection to it, and then usually you also have something like a control plane. A control plane would be like a WebSocket connection as well, and you do some like basic talking to the control plane to ensure that you also have. Uh, your UDP side of things, your your uh, video and audio and all that crap that goes with it. it. It it does have a connection field, but that's the connection number. So the connection number has various ways. So that way you can send down a bunch of different uh, stuff all at the same time. So you have connection one sending down this file, connection two sending down that one. It's just multiplexing on top of it. That sounds uh, like a girthy connection. It is a girthy connection. If you've never done, you should uh, you should at some point in your life try doing a multiplexing of something. It's a lot of fun. It's actually a ton of fun. That's why uh, web sockets, you know, they, in some sense, they kind of suck. You're not really multiplexing anything. It's just not as fun. Like a good multiplex is great. Like, uh, you know, all the control frames, web web sock on all the all the control frames cannot be at all multiplexed. It's it's a lot of fun. Uh, see, Netflix does not use uh, MQTT anywhere. What is MQTT? I don't know that. Let's see, as someone who, uh, whose job is to design and build platforms where web services you all love and use run, uh, while HTTP 3 and Quick have been nice features to, the, uh, to look good on paper, there are many uh, hurdles currently. DDoS mitigation is getting harder. Classic stateful firewalls do not work anymore. QoS and more, uh, let's see, and more need major rework. And overall, the UDP infrastructure in Linux and Windows kernels lack behind. There are many more issues, but these are the most important ones. Oh. Nice. Yeah, I can imagine there's some definitely some st some some firewall issues. That that makes sense, especially as more and more of the data is hidden. It's getting harder. That's also going on my gravestone. He had ADHD. It's getting harder. The name is it's getting harder again. <laughs>